Are you contributing the maximum amount that you can into the Roth side, Roth IRAs, Roth 401k? Well, what are those limits? I've got that. And then I've got three creative times that you can actually do a little bit more than these normal limits. All that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Do you think taxes are going up in the future? I, I do. Guilty. You know, I hope they don't, but, uh, but I, th I think they will. Do you think there will be new taxes created in the future? And if you say, why, why would they do that? Well, just look at how many taxes existed back in, say, 1950 and how many taxes exist now. It's more than double. Things like the additional Medicare tax, net investment income tax, uh, maybe new taxes on Social Security. Do you think there will be new taxes out there in the future? I think so. Do you think the stock market or your investment will be higher out there in the future than they are right now. That's, you know, history's been pretty clear there. Those are just a handful of the reasons why you should be considering saving up into the Roth side of your investment buckets, maybe Roth IRA, Roth 401k. Now, it's not a one size fits all. Even though I love the Roth, we love the Roth, it doesn't mean the Roth is right for everyone. This is a financial planning decision, comprehensive financial planning decision. We've got to look at all six areas of your financial life to see, well, is it better to do pre-tax or Roth for your unique situation and for your circumstances right now? Even if you were doing Roth, are you in a circumstance right now where, you know what, right now, it seems like you should be doing pre-tax, flip it back to Roth next year or something, something like that. It's a financial planning decision. What also is a financial planning decision is are you contributing the maximum amount? Can you afford to do that? Are you, are you contributing the max Roth IRA, the max Roth 401k or not? Well, what are those maximums? And as I shared earlier, there's actually a couple times. If you wanna, if you wanna play the game of how much of your wealth can you get growing tax-free for the future, which is the game I wanna play and most of our clients wanna play. How much of my wealth can I get growing tax-free? There are a few times when you can get creative and find ways of actually contributing even more than these annual limits. So I'm gonna share that as well. Okay, so for 2024, for contributing to a Roth IRA, the maximum that you can do is up to 100% of your income or $7,000, whichever is lower. So if you're only working part-time, making three grand, then the maximum amount that you can put into your Roth IRA is three grand. If you're in a career, you're waking, making you know, a, a normal uh, you know, 100 grand, 50 grand, something like that, the limit is, is 7,000. If you're age 50 or older, the year you turn age 50 or older, you can do an extra $1,000 catch up. So the limit for you is $8,000. That's for a Roth IRA. If you have a 401k or a 403b available to you, uh, those contribution limits to contribute to the Roth side of your 401k or 403b, which most 401ks and 403bs have, not all, most of them have a Roth side to them. But the maximum there is the, is the 401k or 403b contribution limit. So that's 23,000 here in 2024. And if you're in the year you turn age 50 or older, so if you're age 50 or older, you can do a catch-up contribution of 7,500. If you've got the resources to do it, and it makes sense from a financial planning standpoint, the maximum amount that most people can do in their, in, like into the Roth side to get as much money as possible growing tax-free is for someone the younger than age 50 would be 30 grand, so 7,000 Roth IRA and 23,000 Roth 401k. And if you're age 50 or older, 38,500. So are those the limits? Is that, does that answer the question, how much of your wealth can you get growing tax-free each year? And, uh, and, and no, that's, that's, like, that's at the surface. That's the basic level. And many people, from a financial planning standpoint, can't reach both of those maximums. And if you can, fantastic. But if you're in a season or you have a unique circumstance this year where you could go beyond that, are you able to? Well, here's three creative times that you can. The first is making a spousal Roth IRA contribution. Now, if you're married, of course, so you're gonna need to be married, um, but if you're married and your spouse is, is working, then again, that same contribution limit applies to them. They could do 100% of their income 
up to that seven grand, whichever is lower. So if your spouse is working, they could contribute to a Roth IRA. And if they've got a Roth 401k or Roth 403b, the same limits apply to them. So that, that 30,000 or 38,500, you could just double that. But the spousal IRA is for an individual that is married, but their spouse is not working and they don't have any income or they don't have enough income, let's say. And so you look and say, well, that contribute, they, they're not working so they don't have a Roth 401k available, so they can't make that contribution. And that limit for the Roth IRA of up to 100% of your income or seven grand, whichever is less, their income zero, so I guess it's less. No, 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 this first creative way of actually being able to contribute more to the Roth is doing a spousal Roth IRA. And that is you can have your spouse make a contribution or you can make a contribution to your spouse's Roth IRA based on your earnings. So you would have to earn at least $14,000. So that would cover the 7,000 for your contribution and 7,000 for your spouse's contribution. Or if you're both age 50 or older, it'd need to be uh, you know an extra thousand for each of you. So 16,000. Um, that would allow you, again, in this scenario where you are working, your spouse is not, You've got to earn enough to max out that Roth 401k, max out your uh, your Roth IRA. So if you're if you're younger than age age 50, that's 30 grand. But you could put another 7,000, so 37,000 total. You could contribute that extra thousand to your spouse's Roth IRA. Add in the the uh, catch-up contributions if you're 50 or older. A second time period or second unique circumstance where you can seemingly get beyond these annual contribution limits to get more of your wealth growing tax-free is between January 1st and April 15th of each year. If you are not in the habit of maxing out your Roth IRA each and every year, well, it's in that window each year that you can make both a Roth IRA contribution for the previous year and a Roth IRA contribution for the current year. So you can't do this each and every year, but these are the time periods where it, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, someone brand new starting financial planning and hasn't been playing this game, if you ask them, do you think taxes are going up or uh, do, you think, do you think there will be new taxes in the future? Do you want more of your wealth to be growing tax-free? It's, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but then you look and do you have the research, do you have some dollars that are currently growing taxable or not in a, in a tax sheltered account that you should be contributing to a Roth IRA. You know, these dollars over here, why aren't those in a Roth IRA? Yeah, I actually, I, I don't know. I've never really had that conviction or I never told someone or never heard someone, a financial planner tell me that I should do that. Well, if, if that's identified between January 1 and April 15, you can both make a contribution for last year and for this year. So whether you know that's for you or you could even do a spousal as well. So that potentially adds another 7,000 or 8,000 or if it's spousal as well, that adds another fourteen to sixteen thousand on top of your uh, of of your normal kind of the annual maximum that you can put into a Roth. And then the third creative way that you can get more of your wealth into a Roth each and every year, and this one also is circumstantial, doesn't apply to everyone, but if you have a four hundred one k that allows for after tax contributions you may be eligible for something called the mega backdoor Roth IRA. That's, that's a, you know, that's unique uh, finance terminology. There's nothing formal with that, but they, they've been calling it the mega backdoor Roth IRA. Now, what is this? If you have a 401k, then you are allowed to make contributions pre-tax, okay? You can, you can do, uh, when, and when you make that contribution, it's the deduction on your taxes. When you withdraw those dollars, that's when you pay taxes on them. And most 401ks allow you to also do a Roth contribution. And that's what we've been talking about. And those dollars are not a tax deduction today. They grow tax sheltered and that growth comes out tax free, meeting all the criteria. So that's pre-tax and Roth. And you might say, well, Roth is after tax. No, there is a third category and it's called after tax. And that's above and beyond this pre-tax or Roth. That is where your contributions, yes, there's no tax deduction for it. There's no tax benefit for it, but that growth it grows tax sheltered, tax deferred, but when you withdraw the growth on those after-tax dollars, that's when it's taxable. And you might say, well, why would you even do that? Just do the pre-tax or the Roth, and here's the magic, and this is why it's called the mega backdoor Roth, is because, no, 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 you can contribute after-tax above and beyond those 23,000 or 30,500 limits. 
So you could actually contribute the maximum IRS amount, pre-tax or Roth, you know, the 23,000 plus the 7,500 if you're age 50 or older. But then if your plan allows for after-tax contributions, you can do more contributions to your 401k via after-tax up to a total amount of both your Roth and after-tax plus any company match. The maximum amount for 2024 is 69,000 plus another 7,500 if you're age 50 or older. So you could actually do the math there. You can do a lot more, um, maybe up 30,000, depending on what your match is, in after-tax contributions to your 401k. Why would I say these are extra Roth contributions? Because most plans that allow after-tax also allow for an in-plan conversion or an in-service withdrawal. Either one of those allow you to take those after-tax contributions and convert them to the Roth side of your 401k or move them, convert them to a Roth IRA. Therefore, getting those after-tax contributions you just made in the Roth side growing tax-free for the rest of your life. So what's the maximum amount each year that you can put into the Roth side? How much of your wealth can you have growing tax-free each and every year? Well, it depends on eligibility to contribute to a Roth IRA and whether you have a Roth 401k or, or a Roth 403b, but could be upwards of 30,000, okay, more than that if you're age 50 or older via catch-ups, more than that if you are married and, and can contribute to a spousal uh, a Roth IRA, and more than that if your 401k, significantly more than that, if your 401k allows for after-tax contribution. So here's the question, what's available to you? Does it make sense to do Roth? And from a financial planning standpoint, how much of your wealth can you get sheltered into Roth accounts each and every year? Or should you get, uh, get, get, uh, get into the Roth accounts each and every year? Those are questions you need to be working on with your CFP. So work with your certified financial planner on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. Find us online, cohorn.com. That's cohorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.